Welcome to Animal X. We may think we know all the creatures that roam the Earth, but in this planet's darkest corners, secrets linger and mysterious beings lurk. Eyes, just red, sparkle like they on fire. A creature straight out of science fiction. Part man, part reptile. 100% terrifying. What it is, we have no earthly idea. It's bigger than a human. Never seen a human this big. For the experience I've had with law enforcement, you can tell when they're telling the truth. That had to be what it was. This man. There are stranger things in heaven and earth, and you're about to see one of them. Just be careful. It was in the small town of Bishopville, South Carolina, that a strange creature dubbed Lizard Man appeared near the town swamp, whipping the sleepy hollow into a frenzy of fear. What it was, no one seems to know. But it was described as being about seven feet tall with brown and green scaly skin, chicken-like feet, and three-fingered claw-like hands. Daniel and Natalie are in Bishopville to check out these bizarre sightings. Humans that take on reptilian form are, to the science community anyway, biologically impossible, the stuff of comic books and superheroes. Throughout history, people have created myths and legends to explain animals and phenomena that they don't understand. For example, when people found dinosaur fossils, they were thought to be the bones of dragons. Now, it's only when mainstream beliefs are questioned that science and knowledge move forward. I think there may be a logical explanation to these reptilian humanoids. I think we should see what the eyewitnesses have to say. So George, tell us about the creature that you saw in this very swamp about 15 years ago. It had uh, eyes, just red, sparkle like they were on fire. was standing behind a tree about 36 inches in diameter, and it poked its head out. But before then, I'd had an eerie feeling like I was being watched. I had uh, those features and everything. It was more like a human than any animal I've ever seen. The arms was a little bit longer than normal human being arms, but the legs were long and skinny also, along with the little body. Uh, It left a track, a three-pronged track. About the three prongs came out like a chicken foot with the center toe longer. Do you think you saw the lizard man? It had a body maybe similar to a lizard itself for the head, and it, it didn't have any tail or anything like that like a lizard. I didn't tell anybody for quite a while because of I know what people believe it, I think maybe I lost my mind. And I, I know that I'm truthful and honest, 100%. I'm a Christian, I go to church. I got a college education, two years of business college. And I know what I saw, it's in my mind, it's imprinted, and it'll be there when I die. At that time, I didn't know anything about that. It happened in other places nearby. People just didn't talk because they didn't know what it was. Does it frustrate you that people don't believe you? No, I don't care. Like I say, uh, I know what the truth is, and uh, uh, nobody's ever d dismayed me or tried to make me believe what I, that I didn't see what I saw. 
because I'll never forget it. It's an experience of a lifetime. So George, take me through exactly what happened that night. Well, right around about a certain time about dark, good dark. Got on my bicycle, come down and get some water. So I got the water. Then I hold up, look out, see, see something moving. Car flashing around there, it's something tall and dark. It's moving back further, further back in the swamp. So then what did you do? Well, I didn't hesitate. Hit me in his way, I went my way. Hit me in the swamp, and I went that way, that way. Did you look back? No, <laughs> I'm looking back, I'm going far. I'm looking back. What did you see? Something tall, raised up, raised up about eight or nine foot high, going back into the swamp. So were you pretty shaken up? Pretty shaken. Hell standing up, shaking, sweating, terrified. Do you think what you saw is what people were saying was lizard man? That had to be what it was, lizard man. A swamp creature as big as a man? The only thing that big in this neck of the woods is an alligator. But unless someone's taught these big reptiles to walk on two legs, they have to be counted out. Besides, the lizard man is said to have distinctly human or primate features. Daniel struck down another witness who saw the creature from a completely different vantage point. just run us through what happened that day. I fly a spray plane and I was loaded and as I turned around at the end of my runway, made my run up as I always do. And there's a point of no return on my runway because there's trees at the, at the far end. And just as I started to lift off, this creature walked, just simply walked across in front of the plane. And I had, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't throttle back and stop and take a, a good, another look because I couldn't stop because I was at the point. Okay. And so I did go on right, and I'd make a turn and come back, but I never did see it again. But it was, uh, it was bigger than a human. Never seen a human this big. It walked with a kind of a hump, uh, or lope. Had a hump on its back. Um, don't really know how to describe this, but it, uh, kind of flat face, you know. But it did look, look right at me, you know, and, and, and turned its head and, and continued to walk across the runway. He was, he, he walked uh, almost like a human, but he had kind of a lope in his walk. He had a, a sort of a hump back, walked with his head forward, and uh, he looked right straight at the airplane coming and, and uh, turned his head back towards the way he was walking and kept walking and never saw him again. Bishop Phil's bizarre string of lizard man sightings all began with 17-year-old Christopher Davis. It was 2 a.m. He had just finished changing a tire when something running on its hind legs suddenly jumped on his car. As Christopher tried to drive off, the monstrous creature started wrenching the door open, then jumped onto the roof of the car. Sounds like make-believe. He reported the strange encounter to the local sheriff's department. As Lee County Sheriff, Liston Truesdale knew most of the citizens well. Did they really see this creature? And if they did, what does he think it was? I think they are certainly telling the truth, and what they saw almost scared them to death. Now, these people are not prone to exaggeration, are they? Well, the experience I've had with law enforcement, you can tell when they're telling the truth. And, and what? puts credibility to this case is the fact that they didn't come to us 
all of them, we had to go to them. And when we asked them, well, why didn't you report it? And they said, well, I didn't want to be ridiculed by my peers. So Lizard Man was very big news in this town. It must have had a huge impact on the town and on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were making bets everywhere where we was going to catch it or, or what, uh, or solve it or what the problem was. So we sent for these people to, came, to come in and uh, Chris Davis's daddy brought him in first and he was the first one to come in. You actually gave Christopher Davis a polygraph test. I think he was lucky to tell us anything because it pretty near scared him to death. But um, he passed his lie detector test. So does the lie detector test prove that Christopher Davis was telling the truth, that he yeah. saw a lizard man? It uh, proved that he saw something, yeah. We were going to hypnotize him and uh, put him under hypnosis, and uh, but we never did. It. And uh, I'll be fair with you, I was glad to get rid of all this because it nearly worked us to death. Now, you mentioned that he drew a picture of the creature. How did he describe it to you? I couldn't believe what um, he was telling me. It was so far out. And I said, draw it. And he drew it. And um, we have the picture, the, the original drawing that he drew. The head looked like a human, and but what was amazed me was the three fingers uh, and the toed feet. When he drew it, I said, is, is that what you saw? And he said, that's exactly what I saw. I know that uh, people, his peers gave him a hard time. They even nicknamed him the Lizard Man. But uh, as I wind up saying this, that I can't prove that there was anything in the, out there, and I can't prove that there wasn't. So what was the creature that haunted the people of Bishopville? Is it possible that there's some reptilian creature out there we don't know about? Some unknown and extremely rare reptoid hybrid? After all, Komodo dragons, the world's biggest lizards, were considered a fairy tale at one time too. The human brainstem is often referred to as a reptilian brain because of its physical similarities, although they have very different functions. If Lizard Man is real, some cryptozoologists wonder what kind of abilities it has evolved. There is one man who believes that a rare humanoid reptile could exist. Cryptozoologist John Rhodes. I've asked Dan and Ned to meet up with John to find out more about these bizarre reptilian creatures. According to John, it all goes back to the age of the dinosaur. So what do you think these creatures are and what can you ascertain about their abilities? Um, well, considering the research that I've been doing over a number of years, uh, it appears that these might just be natural extensions of our own Earth evolution that they're just an extension of our own biology here on Earth that evolved perhaps parallel to mankind shortly before or maybe even a long time before we evolved into a sentient species. So you think these creatures evolved from dinosaurs that weren't wiped out with the alleged meteor extinction? They possibly could be. There's a very famous American paleontologist who did a study based on the morphological changes or the changes in form of a dinosaur 65 million years ago that was called Truodon. This dinosaur had a relatively large brain for its size. It had eyes that were coming from the side of its head more towards the front to allow it to see across and have stereoscopic vision, gives it better predator skills. And he said, based on the changes that they had seen over a long period of time, where this dinosaur looked like in the past and where it was when they last had the evidence of its existence, if you had extrapolated that just a little bit further, where was it headed? And he said, this thing would, if it had been allowed to evolve 
past the point 65 million years ago when the meteor, supposed meteor, came down to create all this devastation. And the model he came up with was strikingly similar to what was described in the accounts of Genesis accounts of, of ancient history, as well as what, what people are reporting nowadays, a humanoid reptilian form or a reptoid. These creatures may have actually evolved sentient intelligence before humans, and their technologies also would be perceived as more advanced than ours. Number one, because they'd have more time to work on it. Look where we've come in 100 years. I mean, we've gone from the buggy to going to other planets. And in addition to that, their physics that they would be utilizing in their technologies would appear to be magical or even extraterrestrial because their brains are working differently than mammal brains. So perhaps their perceptions and their abilities to reach different intellectual levels are, are different than ours. So they would see things and their technologies would be built differently. So what we're really looking at is a composite description from many people around the United States and also internationally that talk about beings that are anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half feet tall. They have beaded skin like a lizard or scaled skin like a serpent. They have uh, the physical form of a humanoid. Usually they don't see any ears or anything. It could be just flat along the sides of their heads or small pinholes. They have a very flat nose. They have eyes that are very almond shaped with vertical slit pupils, which is very disturbing to people to see. Um, they have sometimes ventricle ridges that go up over the sides of their heads that sometimes they actually come off their, uh, their, their heads by about a half an inch. And from an angle, this must look like horns laying across the, the back of your skull. Uh, they have three fingers with an opposable thumb. Sometimes the claws can be long and sharp. Sometimes they can be blunted almost like a dog's and dark colored. Uh, their legs have been very well pronounced muscularly. Um, they also have uh, feet that have been seen to be have three toes with a receded fourth up near where we would have an ankle. And some of them have been seen with tails, but most of the time they're seen without tails. Humanoid reptiles? <laughs> a definite kink in the evolutionary theory, my darlings. Cryptozoologist Richard Freeman has another explanation for Lizard Man. So do you believe that these reptilian creatures that are attacking people aren't real flesh and blood creatures? If you mean the so-called Lizard Men, no, I don't believe they're flesh and blood creatures. Nothing like that has ever existed in the fossil record, as far as we know, nothing like that has ever existed today. Uh, a scientist, a paleontologist in fact, called uh, Dr. Dale Russell hypothesized in the late 70s that had certain uh, types of small saurosaur dinosaurs, such as Truodon, carried on evolving. If they hadn't become extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, they would have evolved into a, human a humanoid type reptile that would have been at least as intelligent as human beings. But I think that is a rather Victorian view, uh, rather narcissistic as well, modeling an animal on us. Now we know that evolution doesn't work that way. It, it isn't trying, trying or striving to make things more intelligent. It's just adapting them to what is around at the time. A good example of this is sauropod dinosaurs, the large plant-eating dinosaurs. As they grew bigger, the necks grew longer. Their hearts had to pump more and more blood up towards the brain. So they evolved smaller brains and became less intelligent because their necks became longer to allow, allow them to uh, browse on higher vegetation. So this idea of evolution always making things more intelligent is a very Victorian view and a wrong one. What do you think these reptilian beings are, these lizard men? Lizard men, I think, are a product of the human mind. You've only got to look in popular culture and media and they're everywhere. We have uh, the sea devils in the long-running science fiction serial Doctor Who. We have um, the villainous lizard in the Spider-Man comics. We have the reptilian creatures in the series V. They're everywhere in uh, legend, in culture. They're part of some very deep-rooted thing within humanity. You must remember that our primitive ancestors, around three million years ago on the plains of East Africa, the Australopithecines, the things that would have given them the most sleepless nights would have been crocodiles and large constricting snakes. So I think this fear of reptiles that a lot of people have is maybe a fossil memory, something inherited from our, our distant ancestors. So how do you explain the lizard man encounters? Maybe it was somebody in a costume, some sort of a hoax, Maybe it was a media exaggeration. Maybe it was something genuinely paranormal. A paranormal phenomenon? 
Some ancient peoples do believe in animal spirits that can materialize into earthly forms. Daniel and Natalie follow that lead to Whitewater in Wisconsin, where they're about to tour a strange burial ground covered with animal effigies, including some that resemble lizards. I'm really interested in having a look at the lizard mound. Yeah, so we're gonna have a look. Some of these burial mounds were built over a thousand years ago, and Nat and I are about to meet Linda Godfrey, an author who's been investigating these mounds and has some interesting theories. So Linda, tell us a little bit about these animal effigy mounds. The animal effigy mounds are very special because they are found mostly in the southern half of Wisconsin. And mounds exactly like them are not found um, anywhere else in the world, really. And they're old. They were constructed between 300 and 1300 AD, so that um, they were probably made by the ancestors of a local tribe called the Ho-Chunk. No one really knows very much about these mounds or why they were built. But one thing that is known is that there were thousands and thousands of them. And these people went to great trouble and labor to build them. We have bird effigies. Um, Earth-type animals such as bear, panther, um, and deer, and then we have water spirits, which are generally um, considered spirit beings, represented by turtles, lizards, and uh, the mysterious water panther. There's been some strange sightings of, of creatures mm -hmm. like lizard men and things like that. You think there's a slight a relation between these mounds and these strange sightings that people have been having? It occurred to me that perhaps if these mounds represented spirit beings, perhaps that um, the Native Americans performed rites or had um, beliefs that these mounds could actually hold the spirit beings within them. And I began wondering if perhaps when all the settlers came and began plowing over these mounds, so many of them were destroyed or cut into. It used to be a popular Sunday afternoon activity to go and open an Indian mound, as they called it. Um, that if these were indeed um, sacred containers for these spirit animals that perhaps were related to earth energies or, or earth spirits, that maybe it's like letting the genie out of the bottle and that you have, therefore, from lizard mounds, you have lizard men, and from the, the bear and the panther mounds, you have these wolfish or um, ape-type beings that come out. And this is just my own fanciful theory. You know, I have to emphasize that but it does tie into a lot of, of uh, lore that I've been able to discover. We're in a very sacred site here where ancient, well, the ancestors of Native Americans possibly used to congregate here and perhaps used to bury their dead underneath these mounds. And they've used these mounds to symbolize different spirit animals to perhaps protect to protect their dead and maybe that's where Linda gets her idea that once these mounds are disturbed that these spirits then become unleashed and that's why we've got all these modern day sightings of half animal half human creatures. Oh that's right it's a very spiritual place here they used to as you said they used to congregate here it was their church it was their school their meeting place you know they used to work out any problems they used to have and things like that celebrations were done here lots of things and they were possibly built as tributes to the spirits of the air and the earth and the water. And that's why they represent all these different animals. They've got the, you know, the lizard, the bird, the fish, the cougar and the panther. So they're a very spiritual place. Do you think because Native Americans have been in touch with nature for thousands and thousands of years, they know more about the different energies given off by animals and plants? And they're aware of these energies more than we are and because we've lost touch with that, we don't, we don't see them as they see them. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I think one of the other things that Linda was saying was the shamans actually used to create or manifest these spirits to protect these areas and then embody them in the mounds. And um, the theory is that when the mounds are disturbed, that these spirit creatures are then released and then we, we have the modern-day sightings. Whether that's true or not, it's a good, it's a very good story, a good 
good hypothesis anyway. I'm so glad we got to come and experience these mounds and actually see them for ourselves. You can definitely feel a presence here, an ancient presence. A mystical creature? An unrecognized species? Of course, there are some who say reptoids like lizard men don't come from planet Earth at all. According to Mary Rodwell, an alien abductee counselor, there's only one explanation. Can you tell us about some of the experiences people have had with uh, reptilian beings? It's quite interesting that there's an enormous number that do have um, encounters with what they believe are dinosaur, lizard-like reptilian beings, and it's again a, a global thing. Um, some of them are really scary because they seem to be very huge. So can you describe um, these reptilian creatures that people are seeing? Well, many of them seem to be about six or seven feet tall, maybe even slightly bigger. Huge frame, um, snake-like eyes, big snake-like eyes, um, very overpowering kind of presence, a really sort of strong energy. Many of them, I say, feel really fearful of them. They may be a grey, green, or um, they describe sometimes different colours. But it seems to be the eyes that seem to be the most fearful um, part of these beings as well. Sort of a big sort of snout here. Some of them have something that seems like a crown or, or skull um, scales that go down the back, which, um, you know, some see those, some just see them as, as, as a flat back. Very much like one would, un, would expect a dinosaur that's evolved into a sentient, uh, conscious creature may very well have evolved into. Is there a typical encounter that people have with these reptilian creatures? Typical in the sense that it goes with all contact experiences that they may very well feel, um, lie, um, wake up in bed not being unable to move, for example. They'll have a sense of a presence, an overwhelming presence of someone being in the room. Um, and then for others it may be that they end up being on a craft and will see these, these um, creatures. They will have a deep understanding of the being that they've seen. They can describe how it felt to them. They would describe different shades of colour or, or how their eyes looked or the feeling that they got from that being hugely detailed which for me gives it even more credibility as a real experience. I guess that must be quite unnerving for a lot of these people. How, how do you help them deal with it? It's absolutely terrifying for some of them and they're left with post-traumatic stress disorder because of it and that's why we know it is a reality because you don't get those kinds of symptoms from someone who's having a fantasy or you know a hallucination. You would not be left with trauma that may last anything from 10, 20 or 30 years. I've sent Daniel and Natalie to meet a couple of abductees. Rochelle de Lea, who claims to heal people using alien powers, and David Sandikoff, who says he's had as many as six close encounters with reptilian-looking aliens. So, David, tell us about your first reptilian creature experience. My first reptilian creature experience was um, when I found myself, I suddenly woke up being in an out-of-body state and then I saw this strange hand come over the bed and naturally I was quite scared as he probably would be so I kind of like told her to leave um, not using those words probably a bit more aggressive and then I didn't leave and so I started praying and then I thought it left and then it came back and took me out of my body and then I followed it. So what makes you so certain that you weren't just dreaming this? Probably the feelings, the feelings and how vivid it was a very solid very very solid experience I think the fact that it's a reptilian scares them because it's not what they would expect and what's interesting for me is that often the people that have um, see these other beings as well it isn't something that they would normally um, want to try and imagine it, it you know they're not sci-fi fanatics they're not people that read you know um, that kind of fiction they would say look I don't believe in this stuff but I am seeing in front of me one of these beings you know and I've seen them come into my room Rochelle tell us about your first encounter with extraterrestrial life forms probably my first conscious encounter was when I was 18, which is about 10 years ago now, and I could feel lots of um, presences around me, and they seemed to have their hands on me, and I could smell a very distinctive smell. It smelled like dank 
jungle vegetation, um, quite putrid, like decaying vegetation. I mean, you were in this, like a subconscious state just before sleep? I was in a very much a conscious state, so it wasn't a subconscious state. I was very much aware of being awake. So what did the creature actually look like? Reptilian, like a dinosaur, green, scaly skin, rather devoid of emotion. I guess the creature was fairly tall. I didn't want to look at the face. Can you explain to us how you actually communicated with these creatures? Was it like talking like we are now? It was almost like a telepathic well, I would say it would be a telepathic conversation. Uh, what they said to me basically was like downloading of information about how fear controls us. We are totally controlled by fear. Where do you think that these creatures actually exist? Are they from Earth? Are they... What actually are the creatures? I think these creatures don't exist on this physical reality that we call Earth. I believe they uh, exist in another dimension. It's really interesting because scientists are starting to realise that reality is not reality. We could be living in the matrix. This could all be a dream. How time is perhaps not linear. You know, there's, it's, time perhaps does not exist. There is a level of existence where there is all time. You can actually be in the past, present, future at the same point in time. And not only that, you can be everywhere, but nowhere at the same time. I mean, these are kind of like Eastern mystical sort of um, points and stuff like that. Interestingly, many of them initially are fearful because they don't know what they're experiencing, not necessarily because of what's happened. So that to isolate the fear, is it them or is it me fearful because I don't know what's going on? When they actually get to understand it, many of them actually change how they, they view the experience and many say they feel a love coming from the beings and a sense of almost kinship with some of them. Some of them will say, look, you know, I feel they're more like family than my human family almost. Well, let's talk about the reptilian life forms that you've seen. Um, when I've encountered them, I've more felt their presence around me. Um, sort of blurry images of them that I've had have been them having a fairly elongated um, head, um, narrowing down at the bottom and having teeth, um, quite sharp pointed teeth and quite narrow slit eyes. Do the reptilian life forms have a particular language? Most of the communication I've felt from them has been uh, through thought transference. Um, if I was to make some sounds, which I can probably do, that um, would emit the sort of frequencies that I get from the reptilians, I can definitely do that. Um, it'll just take me a moment to feel the energy. Quite a harsh, um, yeah, quite a harsh sort of vibration, really. Usually, when I feel them around, I feel that they are more observing and curious about the nature of our existence. Sometimes there is a, a sexual encounter with them as well, which we don't always understand. Um, so there's a lot of fear generated with them as well. Um, and I actually talked to a, a therapist in America that um, works in this field, and she told me of her own experience where she walked into the lounge room and standing directly in front of her was this huge reptilian being. But for her, it wasn't a, um, a scary thing. She, she felt great love emanating from this reptilian being, and she found herself being drawn to it and actually embracing this being before it literally just disappeared. But it seems to be very real and very tangible for some people when they're feeling um, a sexual response and this heavy weight on their bodies sometimes. But many also see them on the craft doing various tasks along with, you know, the greys or humanoids as well. Do you think that they mean you any harm or, or they're trying to get a message across? There is a lot of debate about the reptilians. What are the reptilian genders? You know, some people think that they're evil creatures which actually dominate this planet. They rule the Illuminati. They rule our leaders. Some people say that they feed off our emotions. The Gnostics, the original followers of Christianity, have that belief. Um, 
Others say that they actually are part of ourselves, part of our psychic, if, if everything's connected. Others saying they're beings put here to make us overcome our fear because there is a belief that fear itself is the limiting fence between our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So, not exactly cuddly creatures. After all, reptilians are cold-blooded. But how much validity is there in these accounts of alien abduction? I've sent Natalie to meet with Richard McNally, professor of psychology at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Professor McNally, you've spoken to a number of people in your research that believe that they've been abducted by aliens. What are these people experiencing? Well, when we ask individuals who believe they've been abducted by aliens, we ask them, well, how did this all begin? And typically what they say is, I was lying in bed, usually on my back, a few hours before dawn, and I woke up. I could uh, see my bedroom in the semi-darkness, and then I attempted to roll over, and I couldn't. I was completely paralyzed, terrified, uh, unable to move. I was just lying there, they say. And then suddenly, they start to have uh, electrical sensations coursing through their body. They start to hear buzzing sounds, lights flashing, and they sense a presence in the bedroom, that there's some sort of beings that have come into their bedroom. They often feel as if they're levitating. And then suddenly they will see uh, what appear to be these alien beings hovering about their bed. Some period uh, later, they will, will wake up, uh, the sun is up, they have no idea what has happened, they may believe they have missing time, and they're absolutely terror-stricken with no idea what, what has occurred. So all of these people are pretty much having the same experience and they're having these experiences just as they wake up. Um, it's referred to as sleep paralysis accompanied by hypnopompic or upon awakening hallucinations. What happens in, in these episodes is that when a person is asleep, when they're in rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep, the stage of sleep when we do most of our dreaming, uh, the dreamer is entirely paralyzed. Of course, he doesn't know that because he's dreaming. He's asleep, right? Now, <clears throat> when the person uh, is uh, in REM sleep, they're, they're dreaming and they're completely paralyzed, but occasionally the person begins to awaken, coming out of, out of the dream. They can move their eyes, but they're still fully paralyzed. And they realize that, in fact. This is a common experience. About 30% of the population will have had this episode every now and then, and about 5% will have it accompanied by the hypnopompic upon awakening hallucinations. Basically, dreaming with your eyes open. Usually lasts about 10 or 12 seconds and then it fades. So you believe these people are having false experiences of alien abduction because of sleep paralysis? Well, we have this sleep paralysis. We have the hypnopompic hallucinations. And here are these two hypotheses. One is the one I just described. The second one is that, well, people are actually being abducted by space aliens. Now, you might say, okay, well, if an open-minded person might give equal weight to both of these, perhaps, but that would actually be inaccurate. Because if we were to credit the authenticity of the second hypothesis, that people are actually being abducted by space aliens and whisked through walls and taken up into spaceships and so forth, we would have to throw out an awful lot of science physics, astronomy, chemistry, biology, to, in order to accommodate that hypothesis. On the other hand, the explanation that I provided uh, regarding the sleep paralysis can provide a ready explanation for why someone would genuinely believe they've been abducted by aliens. We don't have to throw out everything we know about physics and astronomy to accommodate such a hypothesis. It fits in neatly with a large body of scientific research from multiple disciplines. So the two hypotheses, ours and the ones who are uh, being advanced by people who believe they've actually been abducted, are not really on an equal footing because you're going to have to throw out an awful lot of science to accommodate the, the, the true abduction account. So the experience is real. The explanation, I believe, is incorrect. The professor's theory may poke some holes in the alien abduction phenomena. But what about those folks back in Bishopville? They were all wide awake. Now our investigation enters a whole new realm. 
Guaranteed to really blow your mind. We began our investigation in Bishopville, South Carolina, on the trail of the infamous Lizard Man. That trail has taken us to another dimension, inhabited by alien beings with reptile features. Ooh, freaky stuff. But it's about to get even freakier. The Mexican Air Force has released controversial footage of what is believed to be alien spacecraft. I've sent Natalie to Thermont, Maryland to meet with Dr. Bruce McAbee, a doctor of physics. He's looked at the Mexican Air Force footage and believes that they've caught UFOs on tape. Listen to this. Well, they were flying over the Yucatan Peninsula area looking for illegal small aircraft, that, drug runners that overfly going from Colombia to Mexico. Then, as they were flying along, they picked up a radar target. Two things on this airplane that were detecting stuff. One was the radar, which was continually sweeping around. At the same time, the FLIR operator had the option of looking at ordinary video or forward-looking infrared video, which uh, picks up heat sources. Every uh, aircraft we have that can do any speed at all generates heat. So naturally, he would assume that he could pick it up on this on his FLIR system. If you look very carefully, you're going to find there's a faint one here, two extremely bright ones there, faint one here, and a bunch of them right in there. Here he has zoomed in. There are several different magnifications of the FLIR. So. Anyway, this pair, which I call the twins, uh, goes behind the cloud, so do the others. Or the cloud moves between them and it, whatever. The plane, you have to realize, is traveling along. It looks like those objects are moving, uh, but that could be an optical illusion. And now here come the others behind it. He was counting, and he counted up to 11 of these lights. At this point, the people thought that they, the, the, people, the crew thought that they had a, lun, a bunch of UFOs or unidentified something or others traveling along with them. Unfortunately, the plane had to turn right, turn to the right to go back to the base and get fuel. Now the plane is traveling to the right. The cloud seems to be moving to the left. The light is maintaining an almost constant direction with respect to the airplane. So the turn started at this point. Now you will see that he zooms in on this light and you can see how bright it is causing a flare and then all of a sudden everything changed. So in your opinion, this object that was detected on the radar is nothing natural, is nothing human made, it must be a UFO. And it appears the radar target is a genuine unidentified something or other because at close for many minutes it was only two miles in front of them. and. If it had been an ordinary airplane or a balloon or a flock of birds or something like that, they could have seen it at two miles distance. There's no doubt that they've caught a UFO, but who's behind the wheel? If we hitched a ride, would we find lizard men in the pilot seat? Who or what is a lizard man? We've heard some very unusual explanations, from a misidentified species to alien creatures who will take us away in spaceships. What do you think, Dan? Well, I'm not going to say that there's no such thing as extraterrestrials because we just we don't have a clue. Um, whether whether or not they look like reptilian beings, that's another thing. But what about the Bishopful Lizard Man incident? I think what happened in Bishopville and the, the name Lizard Man was, came about through media hype and I mean something was running around in the swamps and, and, and rivers down there and we still don't know what it was, whether it be Bigfoot or something like a bear, who knows, but something mysterious was wandering around the swamps, that's for sure. Now what about you Natalie? Could Lizard Man be a kink in evolution? A dinosaur that evolved in a humanoid form? Well, Bill, there is no doubt in my mind that these reptilian creatures are not part of the animal world. There's no evidence of them in the fossil record, and there are no living representatives of their evolutionary history. 
just like apes and monkeys are living representatives of our evolutionary history. It really doesn't sound like people were seeing a lizard man. It sounds like they were seeing a large primate. That's right, I think the name lizard man actually came from a few songs that were written at the time. Most of the witnesses that we've spoken to, in fact all of them, have said it looks like a big, hairy, ape-like creature. Well, I think that the people that perhaps describe it as being reptilian, like green, having scales on it. I mean, we're in a swamp, there's algae growing everywhere, so that's perhaps where they got the green colouring from. And they're going to be coated in mud. And you know that when you coat yourself in mud and the mud dries, it looks like you've got scales. That's right. What you're saying, then, is that Lizard Man is misidentified. But something else completely. Okay. So, what happened to it? Whatever it is, is it still lurking in the Bishopville Swamp? The swamp is a very big place. There's a lot of places for it to hide. And, um... All the people that went in there looking for it I probably don't, didn't get very far off the road. I think the people would have scattered off and it would have you know, got away into the swamps quite happily and it's probably, if it is real, probably still you know, living there quite contently today. So, my darlings, what do you think? Was Lizard Man a reptoid? Was it an alien, a hoax, or a misidentified creature like a bear? or Bigfoot. We'll keep an eye on the situation and as soon as we hear anything new, we'll let you know. There are stranger things in heaven and earth and you've just seen one of them on Animal X.